Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dr. Jason Jones back with another episode of Health Made Easy, and we are continuing our series on brain degeneration and regeneration. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about five vitamins and supplements that support brain function and regeneration. Now, the brain directs every single activity of the body, and it's important to pay attention to what helps the brain work at its absolute best. Now, a good way to support your brain function and regeneration is is to ensure that you stay hydrated, uh, you know, you get the right nutrition, uh, you limit unhealthy habits, you know, things like smoking or, or drinking too much alcohol, uh, but at the same time, uh, you also keep your body active as well. Now, your diet may not contain all the necessary nutrients that are needed by the brain, and that's why it's good to support brain health by taking the right vitamins, the right supplements to help get the nutrients in to help it function and regenerate. And the reality is at this point, um, with um, everything that's happening and everything that's going on with food, um, to get every single thing you need from the from the foods that you eat is almost impossible, um, unless you live in some sort of, I don't know, perfect island somewhere. Uh, chances are you're just not going to be able to do it. So poor nutrition can definitely cause uh, a, redu- a reduction in our ability to focus, you know, a failing memory, uh, declining cognitive functioning, and even uh, our moods. And you may be setting yourself up for a neurodegenerative disorder like Alzheimer's and dementia. So uh, to avoid poor brain health, you need to get enough nutrients, including vitamins and supplements that support brain function and regeneration. So what are some? Well, here's one. Vitamin E. Vitamin E is a supplement that supports brain function. Uh, uh, this antioxidant helps um, reduce oxidative stress, um, which is, you could, if you don't know what oxidative stress is, imagine uh, oxidation of metal, um, like when something would rust. It's like a similar process in the body. Uh, now, and studies have linked uh, vitamin E to a reduced risk in stroke, heart disease, and Alzheimer's disease. However, you need to take vitamin E in, in moderate proportions. Um, this way, what it does, it helps uh, you know people living with mild to moderate um, dementia, you know, to continue their normal life functions uh, for a short period of time. Uh, so, uh, on the note of how much vitamin E needs to be uh, taken, you don't want to take a really really high amount of it uh, because it does increase the risk of various cardiovascular problems. So what's recommended is that you don't take any more than 500 international units per day unless you are under the direct supervision of your doctor. Now, next one, vitamin C. Vitamin C uh, cannot be produced by the body, so you have to attain it from dietary sources, you know, in the forms of supplements and food. Um, You know, it's a water-soluble vitamin that plays a vital role in brain health. It supports neural development, antioxidant function, um, and neurotransmitter function, which is like all the little proteins and chemicals that allow your nervous system to communicate. Um with uh, each different side of your nervous system and in various parts of your body as well. Uh, And studies have found a link between vitamin C levels and cognitive performance. So a comparison between a healthy and cognitively impaired individual showed that healthy individuals um, contained a higher blood concentrations of vitamin C. Next one, B vitamins. Probably one of the most common deficiencies out there are B vitamins, and they contribute largely to brain health. Um, these, they're basically eight water-soluble vitamins, and there are more um, that have been found uh, since um, then. We're just not going to get into that today. We're trying to keep health made easy, uh, not health made complicated. Um, and what the B vitamins do is they support reactions involved in, in synthesis and repair of DNA and RNA, uh, energy production and a production of chemicals and molecules used by the nervous system. Uh, studies have found that taking B vitamins, including B6, B9, B12, for at least three months help to improve episodic memory uh, for those people living with dementia. Um, and that's all the more reason why research suggests that supplementing with a B complex um, for individuals deficient in one or more of the B vitamins uh, is essential. Uh, it just works better for brain health uh, than using, let's say, isolated uh, B supplements. Next one, beta-carotene. Beta-carotene is found in a variety of vegetables and fruits. 
um, and it's the precursor to vitamin A in the body. So one study observed the, the effects of long-term supplementation with beta carotene in males over 65 years of age. The results showed that long-term supplementation resulted in significantly higher global scores compared to the placebo group, and the global score that they used uh, measured verbal memory, um, general cognition, and the ability to list categorize words. So, next one is vitamin K. Vitamin K is a fat-soluble vitamin present in, um, present in foods. It also helps activate certain proteins associated with survival of nerve cells. So if you have a low amount of vitamin K in your body, it can lead to low behavioral and cognitive performance, but higher levels have been associated with greater verbal episodic memory. So some studies uh, also show that vitamin K may help produce protect against oxidative stress and inflammation, uh, which are mainly implicated in neurodegeneration. So inflammation is not something we're going to cover a ton um, in this particular series, but just understand that inflammation, brain inflammation, body inflammation, um, and inflammation in general is involved in nearly every single chronic disease that's out there. And anything that we can do to mitigate, uh, prevent, um, keep at bay inflammation, and I'm not talking about pharmaceuticals, I'm talking about natural things that we can do that support our body's natural ability to decrease inflammation, um, the better off that we're going to be. Now, uh, it's important to speak, you know, to your doctor before, you know, doing any sort of supplement uh, regimen. Um, but the reality is, is that uh, most physicians, most medical physicians, um, unless they have taken some sort of postgraduate work in nutrition, um, they take about one class um, in school where they learn about vitamins and possibly minerals. Um, you know, it's almost like a throwaway class, uh, quite frankly. And if they're not, in, and they're not involved. In nutrition, and if nutrition is not important to them, it's not important to their family, um, they're not eating healthy, those kinds of things. Um, the reality is, you need to find someone, uh, whether it's a naturopathic doctor or it's some sort of functional medicine specialist or someone who has some serious nutritional um, training to help you when it comes to designing a supplement regimen. Okay, or at least, you know. Go out and read a ton of books and educate yourself on it as well. So this is Dr. Jason Jones signing off for this podcast. We'll see you guys on the next one, and be healthy out there and protect your brain. See you later. Bye-bye.